comes the man who's quite literally yesterday's news here today, born tomorrow. Star of ITV's ITN News at 10 with Trevor McDonald. It's only Mark Austin. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Fantastic, excellent. A pint hey, night. Get yourself a pint in there. Brilliant, eh? Lovely. I love your show. That's it. Boom, 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 boom. Boom! Mark Austin on my show. Boom! Loose women as well. Oh, that's saucy. Boom! Get dancing. Doesn't any idea what's going on. He's returning to LA shortly. Boom! Mark, well, great to have you here now. Thank you very much. Basically, what, what, what um, uh, Mark does is he reads the news. Reads it? He, yeah, yeah, but also you report it as well, cos you are... You have this week... Here we go. This week you're in the paper saying that, um, you know, cos you've been to war zones and all that, you're ideally suited to read the news. Explain all that. Well, no, what I said was... <laughs> and it, I got into very uh, big trouble. But what I said was that I think that there are an increasing number of young, pretty young women huh? and handsome young men... Right. ..without a solid journalistic background yeah. who are going straight into newsreading or want to go straight into newsreading. And my thoughts were that perhaps you should go out and get a little bit of journalistic experience sure. before you go on to read it. <laughs> but, um, I got into terrible trouble with the tabloids who said I was attacking the auto-cuties. But it, I was talking about young women and young men. Yeah. And I was just talking about basic journalistic experience mm. Before you go on a read, well, Matt, that's what matters to you. But I mean, in a way, having you here, Mark Austin, is worrying. Because take a look at some of your recent holidays. Um, <laughs> Iraq, Bosnia, Kosovo, South Africa, Rwanda. I'm worried it might kick off in here because you're here. <laughs> you're like a trouble <laughs> magnet, aren't you? <laughs> and you, you went to Antarctica recently, didn't you? Antarctica. Well, Antarctica was interesting because I'd been to Iraq, I'd been to Afghanistan in the previous year, and they said, "Where can we send them now? Have a nice time." Right. And. They thought Antarctica would be a good place to go and not get into too much trouble. It wouldn't be dangerous. Right. But that's not exactly how <laughs> it, it turned cold? out. Was it cold? Was it cold? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it was cold. Thank God you're here, Jane. <laughs> hey. that it was a penetrating question, yeah. It was cold. <laughs> we went out in a little boat, in a little rib boat, the camera and myself, yeah. to have a look around at the melt that was going on. A lot of the icebergs, you get the dripping coming down. You can see the melt happening there. But these icebergs are enormous, right. vast great things, and we got rather too close to one and it collapsed. <gasps> and about 250 tonnes of ice fell into the water. And, of course, we're in this little rib boat, so we missed the ice just. It was like cars, like, falling out of the... And then this huge wave came at us, and uh, we were very lucky to survive. No. And I thought, charming, isn't it? You, know, you go to Iraq and Afghanistan, you survive. And then you go to Antarctica for a nice little trip. And, and the nearly, scenery falls nearly on die. Yeah. <laughs> scenery falls on the yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, do you have news in America, Ted? Do you have the news? Uh, yes, we do. We get the Fox News that kind of slant things one way. We got CNN slanting the other way. How right. can you slant news? Oh, uh, very easily. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't you think he looks like he'd be a great newsreader? Mm. He's just got that. What is it? Just, the... He's just got that look. The... Of an American newscaster. Nice. Okay, yeah. Nice. You like that, don't you? <laughs> sort of authority and... Yeah, well, that's oh, the I thing like about that, newsreaders. Yeah. You need authority, don't you? Yeah, Do you yeah. have that great authority, Mark? I reckon you could tell me anything nice. right now, and I'd believe it, yeah. right? I reckon you could say... Well, I, you say that. Yeah. You say that. But my first live broadcast, I announced that British Leyland uh, were to close their porklift fuck factory. <laughs> doesn't lend you with great authority, does it? They've port lift fuck tractory. Port lift fuck tractory. <laughs> That's how it came out. But, um, uh, but more recently, I... It was a very serious story. It was the Pakistan earthquake. And, it, it, and what I was supposed to say was our international editor, Bill Neely, saw firsthand right. the relief efforts of the aid workers. Yeah. What I actually said was our international editor, Bill Neely, saw first the hand relief efforts. <laughs> Because, because there was a rose comma in there. You know, you're a rose comma. 
No, but things are, there we are, you've been voted the sexiest male newsreader of all time. Ridiculous. What's that all about? Ridiculous. Oh. Ridiculous. You're very bitter about bitter. these two being sexy. No, I'm not bitter about it. I'm just bringing it up again and again and again. <laughs> what is it you want? Yeah. <laughs> Apart from the heat, you turned up. You. <laughs> who did you? Uh, <laughs> who did you? Um, <laughs> who did you have to beat off to win that? That's come out wrong. That question. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I, well, Trevor was second. Right, OK. So you yes. beat... You he, beat was, he was very miffed to be second. Really? Now, seriously, though, because I'm, I'm not... I'm not sure, because, you know, we're sexy news reader. I'm not... Yeah. Does the news need to be sexy? Because everything's meant to be sexy nowadays, isn't it? And well, I think it helps, doesn't it? Does it? Yeah, I think Really? It yeah. I'm with Ted, I'm not sure. No. no. Yeah. I don't Confuses think... Confuses the issue. Yeah, I don't yeah, think... Yeah, yeah. What issue? It, well, the, it gets in the what way of you? the news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I like it. You like it? <laughs> what, so, family in Africa? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But then I'm going, God, he's sexy. Really? Yeah. So you're not listening and then to I the watch news. it. No, it makes me watch the news and then I learn about the news. Right. See, that's a good point. A good point. <laughs> Lady. Well, see, I'm not, I'm not sure about it, because everything's meant to be sexy nowadays, and I'm not, I'm not sure about it. I mean, you watch an advert... Why and suppose, that? Well, I'm just not sure about it. I'm not sure it's a good thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, bloody hell, those women. The, uh, no, because I mean, you're supposed to want to... You watch an advert, you're meant to want to have sex with your car now, aren't you? Mm. Are you? Yeah. And then what when you do... And then when you do... <laughs> just another guy with a burnt knob and an exhaust pipe. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Britain's broken. Why is there a program called Loose Men, by the way? Because it doesn't work. Well, no, it. there is a show for we men where men it. talk about men's stuff with men. It's called Match of the Day. <laughs> <laughs> so once a week, because then we've said all we need to say and we get on with work. <laughs> <laughs> These are, I have a question, though. Last week, we were told, weren't we, that the world might end. You know about this, Ted, with the mm. Swiss... Nuclear experiment. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and they were worried it might open a black hole and destroy the fabric of space time and all that. Yeah? yeah you, you were talking about that last week in the news, weren't you? I was, yeah. yeah. yeah Swiss particle cannons. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. that. That's exactly how it went. Yeah. Now, if you'd got into work at 5 to 10 from the pub and <laughs> they'd said to you, 20 past 10, the world's going to end, would you stay at your post and read the news? Yes. You would? Absolutely. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. Wow. I mean, <laughs> no, my 11-year-old daughter said to me on the way to school on the Tuesday morning of the week, she said, um, Daddy, is it true the world's going to end tomorrow? And I said, no, darling, no, it's not. She said, good, because I've got a party to go to on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> so lovely. <laughs> so lovely. That's fantastic. Lovely. No, but seriously, I mean, if the four-minute warning went off, I mean, what can you do? What can you do? With four, what can be done with four minutes? Loads. <laughs> uh, yeah, what would you do? What would you do? Hard boiled. Hard boiled, but you wouldn't get to eat it, love. No, that's that true. Ever. No. <laughs> the happy hour would stay on there. Happy hour would stay on. If the world was going to end, we would stay on. We would carry on broadcasting. That's, it. Yeah? that's, that's the yeah? thing about the happy hour. That's the thing about the happy hour. You do your quick yeah. round up. The yeah. world's going to end, but Over don't worry. Oh, Al Murray's happy. Yeah. For the last few minutes of your life, Al Murray. <laughs> You've been watching Happy Hour. Bong. A big thanks to all my guests, Ted, Jane, Colleen and Mark.